All right, everybody, welcome back to another tutorial video here on The Obsession. Uh, today, we're actually going to be covering five tips to help with mind gaming survivors and slowing down your chase time so that you're not chasing somebody for two minutes. Uh, without further ado, we're just going to go and dive right in. That's the intro. Uh, tip number one moonwalking now we briefly kind of talked about hiding your red stain or your line of sight as a killer in the last killer tutorial video but we're going to go a little bit more in depth as to how helpful this can be when a survivor is looping you they sort of depend on the red stain or line of sight to know what direction you are headed and to make their next move usually survivors are purely reactionary so when in an lt loop or a shack loop survivors can waste your time for a, a very long time if you're just following blindly behind them so instead of just chasing in circles over and over again stopping behind a wall and moonwalking backwards may get the survivor to slip up or second guess their choice or just stand still enough for you to close the distance now, see-through walls or slatted boards make this a bit harder to do because usually survivors can see you, but uh, doesn't mean it's impossible. And be sure that survivors don't see you doing this. So if you're on the inside of the shack and they're in the window, they can see you moonwalking. So that isn't going to usually benefit you super well. It's also really important to note that moonwalking isn't something you'll be able to do at many normal loops where survivors can see you the entire time, like where there's rubble or trash heaps. This is really meant for giant walls, like I said, the LT loops or shack loops. Tip number two, knowing when to break a pallet. Again, we briefly talked about this in one of our last videos, but sometimes immediately breaking a pallet can result in survivors escaping to another tile or to another loop as part of their plan. A lot of survivors will plan the next step, and so you breaking the pallet gives them plenty of time to run. My strongest suggestion when breaking a pallet is to figure out where you want the survivor to go, and if breaking the pallet from the side you're on is beneficial. Are they cornered? Are they being forced to run past you or run to an unsafe area? Are they running where there are no pallets or no safe windows? If you need to, loop around the area that you're in to break the pallet from a better angle to force them where you want them to go. Tip number three, faking a pallet break. This one isn't one that you would ordinarily, I think, think about. Actually, this one had to be taught to me. Uh, but faking a pallet break is actually really helpful. After a bit of looping following a pallet drop, survivors expect you to stop and break the pallet, of course. Depending on the size of the loop, though, you can actually fake the pallet break to scare the survivor from the area that you're in. Simply walking up to the pallet and looking downwards or standing still can make them think you're going to smash it. This is where you now continue chasing, eventually downing them faster than if you had broken the pallet. This technique will again depend on the loop in question, the survivor's capability to read you or call your bluff, but it's actually something a lot of people don't consider that I think would help you up your killer game a lot. So tip number four is knowing when to let people slug. One of the biggest mistakes that I see killers making is hooking every single person they down the minute that they down them. And while sometimes this is good, sometimes it's not. Sometimes the best thing you can do is let them stay on the ground bleeding. I mean, it's called slugging for obvious reasons. Now, there are a few reasons you would want to slug somebody, but generally, if you down a survivor and know that there are a couple people in your immediate area, go for the free hits on the other people. Go for the potential down on other people. Leaving one survivor on the ground means that their teammates have to come heal them, forcing more people out into the open as well, giving you the opportunity to chase them down or, at minimum, slow down generator progress because if they're healing and running around, most of them aren't doing generators. Now, say you have somebody on the hook and then you chase someone else and down that second person. Well, now is the time to let that second person slug and return back to your hook. This is a great play. See, most survivors will see that you're in a chase and they'll go for the unhook, believing that it is safe. And you may actually catch them running away from the unhook or in the act of unhooking. So in this case, you're starting to snowball and these survivors are starting to have to constantly heal, constantly unhook. And this is where the tides can really turn in your favor if you keep applying the pressure. Tip number five, and this one we've talked about before, but don't be a nice guy. Dead by Daylight's a competitive game, and some people are going to be upset and angry at the end of the match, no matter what you do. Now, 
I'm not saying to hook people and camp them. I'm not saying to tunnel people or always go after the dude who just got unhooked. I mean, if you were a survivor, you would hate that too. But hooking somebody and going for their teammate who is coincidentally right near the hook is a smart play. Hooking somebody and seeing scratch marks nearby and investigating is a smart play. You're not a camper if one of the survivor teammates is running you loops around the hook, making an unhook even more unsafe. If the guy who got unhooked a minute ago is just gen rushing uh, across the map and you happen to stumble upon him, that's not a tunnel and you don't necessarily have to walk away from that interaction. Obviously, you shouldn't watch them get unhooked and chase them down, but sometimes I think killers are pressured into being too nice because they'll be called campers, tunnelers, and all kinds of mean things at the end of the game. And I don't think that's the case. Know what is rude, know what you hate to see, and don't do those things. Letting people constantly get away could cost you so many matches and be incredibly frustrating. And at the end of the day, honestly, as a killer, if you get dunked on by survivors, they're still going to make fun of you sometimes. So obviously be respectful, but don't let people go just out of the kindness of your heart to be a nice guy because you're afraid of ruining their matches. And that's it. That is all five tips for how to become a better killer in Dead by Daylight, specifically how to break your chases faster and mind game survivors a little bit more. If you guys like this video, obviously hit the subscribe for more. Check out these other killer tip videos and we'll see you in the next video. I will pray to the entity for it.